If we can embrace this way of thinking and empower citizens to get involved in, in ways that excite them and enhance their attachment to the connection of the places in which they live and visit, those places that really matter to them, then I'm convinced that we will ensure that Lancaster County will not only remain a great place to live and a great place to visit in the future, but it will remain that special and amazing place that we've come to know Lancaster County as. So that's my message this morning, and I think it would be great to ask anybody. Okay, great. Cool. Um, that's a phenomenal project. And what was interesting to me about that is that the highline, or the proponents of the highline, didn't focus on this rusting, abandoned, above ground rail line as a historic artifact that just needed to be protected and, and interpreted. But instead, they focused on it as a, a facility, as a catalyst, if you will, for a vibrant, lush, recreational gathering spot in the heart of Manhattan. And it is incredible what's happening to the economic value of the businesses and the buildings adjacent to that line. And um, it's, it's certainly an attractor. I mean, a whole busload of us went there specifically with the idea to see the High Line and to walk the High Line, and it is incredible. So we need to begin talking about contemporary uses, obviously, of these resources. And of course you get the flavor, and of course you see the history, and of course you get the interpretation. Um, but uh, rather than just protecting it for itself, let's find ways in which we can reuse it, like this building. And what if we begin talking about the role that um, this whole effort of protecting our community character plays on um, rehabilitation? of our important resources. Um, the West King Feasibility Study, you may be aware of, um, is one in which we take a whole look at this neighborhood, again, one of our communities, if you will, treasure place, and talk about how can we convert and, and change this whole uh, community to one that's vibrant and one that attracts people. And what if we talk about how rehabilitating existing buildings produces roughly 50% more jobs than new construction? And of course, what if we talk about the environmental role of recycling old buildings? It's the ultimate you know, in recycling, if you will. And historic buildings, neighborhoods, and main streets, by definition, are sustainable. So what we need to do is become proactive. We need to reverse it. What if instead we spend our energy and resources, um, that topophilia that we have, this love of place, and we began holding workshops and, again, events and, and meetings and so forth, proactively identify those places that matter up front. Let's think of that kind of in the way we thought about our urban boundaries. Let's go to communities and say, what are these places that matter most to you? And um, what, or how can we focus our limited resources at the county, at the local level, um, public, private, nonprofit levels? How can we focus that limited energy we have um, and, and make sure that we are having positive impact in the long run. And in these places where we do that, we can test and advocate for some of the most innovative tools that we have available to us. For example, you know, this is where maybe we can apply tax credits. This is where we can apply um, the transfer of development rights for historic buildings. This is where we can um, look at traditional neighborhood development overlays. The only way we can regulate community character in Pennsylvania under the municipal plan. This is where we can try facade programs and so forth. We can help create these places. And if we do that, then they become the models for other places in Lancaster County. We can take people there and they can see what you can do with limited resources and a lot of energy and a lot of passion because these places matter to people. And unfortunately, oftentimes in the process, this is what we end up with. And we have, if we're lucky, have good documentation of what's lost. But that's not obviously either helping our sense of place. One of the good examples, I think, um, of, of working together in this kind of holistic approach is something that we've done recently um, with PHNC, um, Pennsylvania Historical Museum Commission, um, and PennDOT. Very rare that you get those two organizations to get agencies together, and including us. And what we did is we sat down, and they were piloting this project that hopefully will become standard for the state, working with each of the counties. And that is to identify those places that really matter, again, treasure places. What we did is we took all of our different comprehensive plan elements, our heritage plan, which is all about historic and architectural and archaeological resources, 
He took our greenscapes, which is about our natural resources and trails and greenways. And we took our tourism plan, which is all about authenticity. He thought we were going to have lose the last acre of farmland in the county because we kept seeing things like this. Um, we were losing our historic resources in our urban places. We were seeing, you know, the typical off-the-shelf architectural styles of the chains moving in and so forth. We were losing that sense of place, the spirit of place that defines us. And, you know, so, so we did have a challenge, but, but the people of Lancaster County came together. And they came together to put together one of the most um, significant growth management tools in the country. And we put together a plan that directed growth to appropriate places using an urban growth boundary and so forth. And we were quite successful in directing that growth. Where we have not been so su successful has been in the pattern of that development. So we've dealt with the location so far, but we haven't really dealt to the degree we need to with the pattern. The, the pattern that really creates a sense of place. And that's our next challenge. But, but now we have another challenge. Let's cycle up to 2008 and think about the last four years. And I think you'll agree that once again, we've seen some very dramatic changes in the way um, that many people haven't seen since the Great Depression. Today we're faced with many challenges that are affecting our economy, our environment, and our society. And add to that a world where fiscal resources are diminishing at, at huge amounts. I mean, think about the public sector, you know, we're feeling it, you're feeling it, the nonprofit and the private sectors. And, uh, you know, we're hoping for, for some change turnaround here soon, but, but right now things are looking a little bit gloom for those projects and programs that we had in place for years to help facilitate the protection of community character. And add to that, this incredibly um, hard to understand distrust in government. Um, I'm from government, we're from government, we're here to help, but that's not a joke anymore because people today are finding government as intrusive and they're, and they're concerned about anything that's maxing new regulations and or rules. And so, it's quite easy to see why we need to take a new approach. The traditional approaches probably aren't going to work for us as they are certain connections that you feel to this place that we call home. I, I often think about, I, I was raised in Lancaster County, um, and I often think about my friends who went off to college, maybe off to different cities for jobs and things like that. And um, when it came time to settle down and have a family, they began feeling that uh, Lancaster County pool, whoops. And, you know, that connection again, that attachment to place. And, you know, it's interesting because my, my dad uh, was also raised in Lancaster County, and like I said, I was born and raised here. We did move to Fulton, New York um, for about a year. My dad was an auditor for Armstrong Port Company. And we moved there, and it was a totally different environment. The winters were killers. Um, but then after a year, we kind of said, this just really does not feel like a home. So we moved to Glenshaw outside of Pittsburgh, some of you may know that area. And we tried that for a year. And my dad said, this just doesn't feel like a home. So after those two excursions and two years of kind of trying different places, we felt that connection and that pull to come back to Lancaster County and continue to live here and raise our families. Um, it's interesting to know, too, many of you probably know people that you come across that have traveled here as children on family vacations. You know, and later in life, when it was time to get a job or maybe even retire, they thought about Lancaster County and they're coming back. They were feeling that pull. And the same thing, what's really interesting to me now is meeting so many young people, you know, um, that I'll talk to, like on the first ride or something like that, and find out that, yes, you know, they found out that Lancaster County has so much to offer, especially Lancaster City right now, with the walkable urbanity. And I'm sure there's like dozens of other stories and so forth that you can all tell. Um, regarding this, uh, this connection pool that's sometimes hard to describe and sometimes hard to define. Um, I'm actually a geographer by trade, and geographers like to call this connection or this feel of, of, and love of place, terpophilia. It kind of sounds like a disease.